Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, in a place known as Fairyland, lived a fairy called Macrina. She was of the Scriblian clan. They were fairies. They had wings so fine you could barely see them, and powers so great no one dared to cross them. And in Fairyland lived many clans. The clan Scriblian, who were writers, the clan Wargles, who were great warriors, the clan Macorum, who were goldsmiths, the clan Drummond, who were musicians, and the clan Macfarmlan, who were farmers. But it is between the two clans of writers and warriors that our story takes place. The Scriblians and the Wargles had two rules. Never venture out of clan land and never talk to a fairy from the other clan. And so they stayed apart for generations. But trouble was brewing. It had been prophesied that when the stars began to fade, a storm would come. A storm so ferocious that it would swallow the land whole. And only the meeting of two fae would save them. For these two fairies could unite the land and save all beings, fae and human alike, from the storm. Only when the two meet would hope live again. The stars had been fading for quite some time, but the clans remained apart. The sun stopped shining and the wind picked up. It was drizzly every day and every day there was a bit more rain. The fairies were used to it, but the clan leaders did not know what to do. How can you fight what you cannot see? And this is where our story begins. Macrina was a scribble. This was what they called the young fae of the clan Scriblian a young scribe who had not yet written her story. Every scribble must write a story from beginning to end as a rite of passage. And when they read it in front of the Grand Council, it is only then that they become a scribe. Macrina was running out of time to write hers. She had started countless stories, but could never seem to finish them. It was her class who would be next to present to the council in three months' time. One day, she went into the forest, hoping to find inspiration for her story, but she found none. Then, she reached the border where the Scriblian land met the Woggles. Perhaps I might find some inspiration over there, she thought. And although she knew it was forbidden, she stepped over the border and into Woggle territory. There was really nothing different about it. Same trees, same animals, same quietness. Then, a branch cracked. Macrina flew into the air and hid on a tree branch high up. There was only silence. Suddenly, something landed on the branch next to her. Macrina was so surprised she almost fell out of the tree. Hello, it said. I'm Ennis. Macrina blinked. There was another fairy there. A boy fairy. A woggle fairy. She jumped back. I won't hurt you. What's your name? Macrina, she replied. You're not from my clan, Mackie. Otherwise I'd have known you. I'm... I'm not... Don't call me Mackie. All right, Macrina then. Goodbye. And with that, 
Macrina flew away and back to her land as quick as she could. She stopped at the border and turned to look back. Sure enough, Ennis had followed. He stood right inside the line between their lands. You're not supposed to come over here, you know that, don't you? I was trying to find my story. You've lost it then? I never had it. Can I help? I doubt it, Macrina replied. You drop this, Ennis said. He held out his hand and in it was Macrina's necklace. Oh dear, she cried. I would never have forgiven myself if I'd had lost it. It belonged to my mother. Macrina took the necklace from Ennis's hand and when they touched, a purple light shined from their hands. How strange, said Ennis. Macrina pulled her hand away. Will you come back and visit? He asked her. Perhaps, she replied. She flew home. But the next day, Macrina found herself right back at the edge of her land. When she arrived, he was already there waiting. Hello, said Ennis. Hello, Macrina replied. And from that day on, they were best friends. They met in secret, of course, but they met and Macrina had begun her story. It was about Ennis, the great warrior, and Macrina, the scribe of scribes. Ennis told her of the prophecy, and so she wrote. They walked together each day, every day a new place. Sometimes in Wargle land, sometimes in Scriblian land. But who are the Fae who will save the land? She asked. Perhaps it is us, said Ennis. Macrina laughed. <laughs> you are quite silly, Ennis, quite silly. Then Macrina tripped. She fell onto a slippery rock and could not catch herself. But Ennis did. He grabbed her. Thank you, she said. He kissed her. And in that moment, it was as if the sun had come out. All around them lit up. The brightest golden light anyone had ever seen. They could not believe it. And when they parted, the light attached itself to their wings. What's happening? Macrina asked. Then a rock moved. He unrolled himself and announced, The prophecy. We have found the fairies. The entire forest came to life. Hooray! cried the trees. We are saved! cried the animals. Hope! is alive, shouted the rocks. What are you talking about? Macrina asked the little rock in front of her. The prophecy, that it is only two fairies to save us from the storm. It is you, the light, the light is within you. And the storm this way comes. You must save us. How? Ennis asked. We cannot fight what we cannot see. But you can, said the rock. It is you who must unite the land. Unite the tribes and the storm will not be able to defeat us. Together we will survive. Macrina could not sleep that night. How could we save the land? It couldn't be me, she thought. Then, suddenly... There was a knock on her window. Ennis was there. It's too dangerous. You, you mustn't be here. We must go to the king. He's the only one who can help us. I am a scribble. I'm not a warrior. But you are. You are whatever you want to be. Look inside your heart, Macrina. You are fierce. Whether pen or sword, it is within you. Come with me. If the prophecy were true... How could Macrina turn her back on her own? I will come with you, 
Together, they flew to the kingdom where the king of the Fae lived. It was a beautiful place. Your Majesty, said Ennis, we... And as he began, their wings started to glow. The light, said the king. It is you. Ennis and Macrina were once again surprised. So it is true, they thought. Whatever you need, it is yours. Save us from this storm, young ones. We must unite the land, it's the only way, said Ennis. We can do it, said Macrina. She took Ennis's hand. We will do it together. Together, Ennis replied. And so they went home. How should we do it? Ennis asked. Let us go to my father first. He will help us. So they went to Macrina's father. Over my shoveled wings, you will bring war into my house. But father, he is my friend and we must unite. No matter what, the storm is coming and we are all in danger. Macrina's mother sat by the fire. It will swallow us whole. Listen to them, Torquil. Don't you see how their wings glow? They are the prophecy. Prophecy? Don't speak to me of prophecies. She will finish her story and she will be a scribe. But father, what if this is my story? Macrina asked. Puff and puff, enough! He exclaimed and stormed out of the house. Go and we will follow you, my child said Macrina's mother. Thank you, mother. And Ennis. Yes, ma'am. Be careful. Take care of my daughter and know you are welcome in this home any time. Thank you, ma'am. I will be back. That I can promise you. They flew through the forest and across the border. When they reached the Wargle's town, Ennis went inside first. Wait here he said. Macrina winced as she heard things being thrown, voices shouting, and then silence. Ennis emerged behind his mother. Come in, please, she said. Macrina went inside. Ennis's father was standing in the corner, arms crossed. A scribe in my house? It was at this moment that Macrina's parents arrived. A scribe in your house, a warmonger in mine, cried Torquil. The two fairies were so close to blows that Macrina screamed. And then their wings glowed. The parents stopped. There was nothing more to be said. What do we do? Torquil asked. Unite the fairies of the clan Scriblian and Wargle so that we may unite with all Fey clans and save the land from the storm. It comes quickly. Do you feel it in the air? The damp, the clouds, the wind? We must not waste one moment. So they went to each door of each family in both clans and called a meeting at the fairy pools. Let that place be the place where we clean ourselves of the past, wash it away and be renewed, Ennis said. By dawn, all the fairies had gathered, the Scriblians on one side and the Wargles on the other. Why are we here, Torquil? asked one scribe. Listen to me, daughter. She and the Wargle are the only ones who can save us. We must unite. It is true. Alone we will not survive. Together we will save ourselves and the land. She took Ennis's hand. Their wings glowed so brightly that the light reflected off the clouds above. All the Fae were in awe. Save us, cried one. What will you have us do? Let us unite, cried Ennis. 
And they did. The Scriblians and the Wargles, who had vowed never to speak again, began to mingle. As soon as they did, lightning struck. The storm had begun. We must find the others, Macrina told them. And so they flew through the rain and the wind against the branches and leaves to find all the other clans. There on a cliff, they waited. The storm roared, the earth cracked and the ocean cried. Take my hand, Macrina told Ennis, and he did. The light glowed around them. Everyone must take hands. And so they did. And in that instant, the light ignited like a chain reaction and shone so brightly that the cloud burned away and the moon came through. Each star began to shine again. And so the storm grew weaker. When the very last star returned, the rain stopped, just as the wind had done, and the thunder and lightning. Peace came. The breeze rustled the trees. We are saved, cried the fairies. Hooray for Magrina! Hooray for Ennis! So the prophecy had been fulfilled the storm was defeated. Hope was alive again and the fairies knew it. Macrina finally finished her story and she was made a scribe. And when the clans Scriblian and Wargle were once again allies, Macrina and Ennis built a small cottage high up in the trees and they were married under the stars and lived happily ever after. And now it's time to take a deep breath and close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>